Thank you for joining us today. Our objective is to help you understand the operating characteristics of our 2010 engines. In addition, we will also provide some tips that we believe you will find useful and practical. So let's get started. But first, let me make a few comments about our product lineup for the fire market. Cummins offers a complete lineup of engines, beginning with the ISB 6.7 and the ISC 8.3 and the ISL 9, to the most compact 10 to 13 liter engine in the industry, the ISX 11.9, and the industry's leading big board diesel, the ISX 15. A unique advantage for Cummins is our total systems integration approach. Cummins is the only engine manufacturer with key engine components and subsystems designed and manufactured in-house for a fully integrated package. We design and manufacture our own fuel system, air handling, filtration, electronic controls, and after-treatment. The Cummins after-treatment system is fully integrated with our engines. And for 2010, our complete lineup of engines from the B6.7 up to the X15 incorporates the Cummins after-treatment system which includes a diesel particulate filter and selective catalytic reduction, better known as SCR. Now let's focus on helping you understand the operating characteristics of our 2010 products. Joining me in the discussion is Mike Bartkowski. Mike, good afternoon. Thank you for being here. I'm glad to be here. I know many of our fire chiefs, as well as others, have lots of questions about 2010. Yes, so let's take this from the top. First question. What is after-treatment and why do we need it? There are two primary components of diesel engine exhaust that are currently regulated by the EPA. Particulate matter, which is basically soot, and oxides of nitrogen, commonly referred to as NOx. Think of the after-treatment as replacing the muffler in the exhaust system on the fire truck. The Cummins after-treatment system serves two purposes in diesel emission reduction. First, the diesel particulate filter virtually eliminates all soot. There isn't any black smoke coming out of the exhaust. And second, SCR, or selective catalytic reduction, reduces NOx, or oxides of nitrogen, to near zero emission levels. When we say that the engine and after treatment are integrated, think of the engine as being designed and developed to deliver performance and reliability, and the after treatment being integrated with the engine to reduce emissions in the exhaust. The engine delivers the power and the performance that you need in a fire truck and the after-treatment takes care of the emissions in the exhaust. So, that's a good overview. Now tell me how the DPF, or diesel particulate filter, and SCR, or selective catalytic reduction devices, how do they really work? Okay, first let's talk about the DPF. So when the exhaust leaves the engine, the first device in the after-treatment system is the DPF. The DPF is composed of two components, a DOC, or diesel oxidation catalyst, and the actual filter, or DPF. The purpose of the DOC is to help aid the DPF in oxidizing the soot, or what we call passive regeneration that we'll talk more about later. The DPF is a ceramic wall flow filter, which means that the solid particles in the exhaust, or soot, are actually captured in the DPF, and the carbon in the soot is oxidized, resulting in a clear and clean exhaust exiting the tailpipe. Mike, you mentioned passive regeneration. Talk more about that. Sure. Let me explain two modes of regeneration, passive and active. The vast majority of the time, the after-treatment is operating in what we call passive or passive regeneration. Under normal operating conditions, the heat in the exhaust is at a temperature whereby the soot or carbon collected in the DPF regenerates or oxidizes. You can think of this as the DPF cleaning itself, or what we say as passive regeneration. Now, active regeneration, there can be conditions where the soot or carbon builds up in the DPF whereby passive regeneration isn't oxidizing or cleaning the filter at a fast enough rate. This condition can occur under light duty operation where the engine and after treatment aren't operating enough time at normal operating temperatures. In a condition or situation like this, an active regeneration will occur. Under active regeneration, a small amount of diesel fuel is introduced into the exhaust, which reacts across the DOC to increase the actual exhaust temperature inside the DPF to increase the level of regeneration. An active regeneration is controlled by the engine's ECM. No operator or driver interaction is required. So, to sum up, the vast majority of the time the DPF operates in passive regeneration mode. 
but if conditions occur where the soot build buildup exceeds a certain level, the engine's ECM initiates an active regeneration, which causes regeneration to occur at a higher rate, thus cleaning the filter of soot or carbon. Okay, Mike, that's a good overview of what the DPF is and how it works. Now let's focus on what the operator or driver needs to know. Good point. First thing, let me point out that we have a driver operator tip card. This card provides guidance on what a driver or operator needs to know about the 2010 after treatment system. There are two lamps on the dash that communicate information to the driver operator. The first lamp is called a HES lamp, which stands for High Exhaust System Temperature. As an example, when an active regeneration is in process, this lamp will illuminate. The symbol on the lamp shows a thermometer in the exhaust. The purpose of the lamp is to alert the driver or operator that high exhaust temperatures can be present. The second lamp, which has a symbol of a filter in the exhaust, illuminates to indicate to the driver or operator that the DPF needs to regenerate. And the driver or operator has two options. One is to operate the vehicle at highway speeds for at least 20 minutes. This will provide enough time for the system to complete an active regeneration. Or there's a second option. This procedure is called a parked or stationary regeneration. For this procedure, the driver needs to park the vehicle in appropriate location, set the parking brake, and confirm that nothing is on or near the exhaust system. There's a switch on the dash that the driver will push, which will enable the parked regeneration process. Engine speed will increase from idle. You'll also notice a slight change of sound coming from the turbocharger. You need to allow for at least 40 minutes to complete a park regeneration. Once the DPF has regenerated, the engine will automatically return to normal idle speed. There's another switch known as the inhibit switch that will prevent the engine from initiating an active regeneration, or it will stop one that's in process. Operators will have to be careful to turn off the inhibit switch unless it's really needed or they could plug up the DPF. So that's a general overview of what the driver or operator needs to know relative to the diesel particulate filter. Again, the driver tip card is helpful in explaining everything that I just went through. I would also advise that customers should reference their Cummins owner's manual as well as the vehicle owner's manual for complete operating instructions. Thanks, Mike. That's a good overview of how the system works. I have a few more questions, some of which are specific to how this system functions in a fire truck. First, when the engine initiates an active regeneration, will there be any change in power available from the engine? That's a good question, Lou, and the answer is no. The active regeneration process is designed to be transparent and does not have any impact on the engine's ability to make power or govern speed. The active regeneration will happen in the background without any impact on the operation of the vehicle. What about a situation where the engine senses that an active regen is needed while the fire truck is pumping water or operating in PTO mode? Another excellent question, Lou, and one that we get asked all the time. The answer to this is a little more complicated because each vehicle manufacturer controls this via a programmable parameter. So it might vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but here's how it works. The vehicle manufacturer will program the engine to either allow an active regeneration in PTO mode or not. Customers will have to check with the vehicle supplier to see how this is set on their truck. If the vehicle manufacturer allows it, it's designed to be transparent just like if you were driving. The HES lamp will illuminate to indicate an active regeneration in process, and the operator will have to be aware of potential hazards associated with high exhaust temperature while the vehicle is stationary. So does NFPA 1901, the fire apparatus industry standard, have anything to say about regeneration while stationary? As a matter of fact, it does. NFPA 1901 says that engines and fire trucks should be allowed to perform an active regen while pumping, and we're in compliance with this. Really? I'm somewhat surprised by this. Why would NFPA 1901 recommend that active regeneration be allowed while the vehicle is stationary? I believe that the thinking around this was along the lines of, if you give the engine as many opportunities to keep the DPF clean by itself, it will require less action by the fire department in order to keep the filter clean. NFPA 1901 also recommends that every fire truck have a device called an exhaust diffuser, which lowers the temperature at the tailpipe during a regeneration. So if the vehicle is set up to allow an active regeneration while pumping or in PTO mode, and a fire department decides that they don't want it to, is there anything they can do? Yes. 
A fire department can use the inhibit switch while in pumping or in PTO mode. They just need to remember to reset it when they're back on the road or they could plug the filter. So if the filter ever plugs, will there be derates or shutdowns? This has been a common question for emergency vehicles and the answer is no. There's a series of warning lamp actions that will occur if the soot load in the filter rises above certain thresholds. In non-emergency applications, there are speed and torque derates that can occur. But for emergency vehicles, these derates are disabled and we would never shut off an emergency vehicle engine for soot load. This doesn't mean that fire truck operators can ignore the warnings. It just means that we don't ever reduce power or change speed because of soot load in the DPF. Okay, that's a good explanation and operation of the DPF. But we also have selective catalytic reduction, which is the second part of the after-treatment system. So talk to us about SCR. Yes, good point. Let me talk about SCR. Where the DPF takes care of the soot, the purpose of the SCR device is to reduce oxides of nitrogen or NOx. In order for the SCR system to reduce NOx in the exhaust, a reactant or fluid is required. The industry name for this fluid is Diesel Exhaust Fluid, or DEF. Here's how it works. Between the DPF and the SCR catalyst is a connection pipe where a dosing valve introduces a small mist of the DEF into the exhaust. DEF is a composition of urea and water. The DEF breaks down into ammonia in the exhaust. So as a small amount of ammonia enters the SCR catalyst, a chemical reaction takes place between the ammonia and the NOx to form nitrogen and water. And it's the nitrogen and water that exits the exhaust pipe. That's how NOx is reduced to near zero. Okay, I, I understand generally how the SCR system works, but you mentioned a new fluid, DEF. How does the driver operator, what do they know about this fluid? Good question. There's a new lamp and gauge on the dash, much like your fuel gauge, that indicates quantity of DEF on board. At varying levels of DEF, a lamp will illuminate to indicate low levels of DEF. And if the DEF lamp begins to flash, the DEF level is critically low. Okay, I understand that. I think though, Mike, there are a few more points or tips that folks in the fire industry want to know about 2010. Tell me more about DEF. DEF is a 32.5% urea water solution. It's non-toxic, non-polluting, non-flammable, and it's safe to handle and store. The rate of DEF consumption is about 2 to 3% of fuel consumption. The actual consumption rate is dependent on a number of factors such as vehicle duty cycle, geography, and climate. The DEF tank size for each vehicle is determined by the vehicle OEM. In the fire truck industry, DEF tank sizes of 5 to 10 gallons will be common. So with a tank size in the 5 to 10 gallon range, how often will a fire department have to refill the DEF tank? Well, if you do the math, the DEF tank volume is equal to about two fuel tanks. This is going to vary from application to application, but generally speaking, customers should expect to have to refill the DEF tank once for every two fuel tank refills. Another way to think about this is to consider a 50 gallon fuel tank. If you consume 50 gallons of fuel, you'll consume about one and a half gallons of DEF. If you have a vehicle that will be operating on a scene for an extended period of time that may require refueling on scene, you should consider carrying a small amount of DEF on the truck, such as a one or two and a half gallon jug. So you mentioned before that Cummins emergency vehicle engines don't have derates or shutdowns for excessive soot load. So are there any derates associated with, with the SCR system? It's critical that these engines are always operated with DEF in the tank. A part of our EPA certification includes assurances that the engines will not be operated without DEF. At very low DEF levels, you may experience a power or vehicle speed reduction until the DEF tank is refilled. Once refilled, the power and vehicle speed will resume as normal. What would you like fire chiefs to know as the key takeaways from our discussion today? Cummins engines and after treatment for 2010 will perform well and provide the reliability and durability that firefighters demand. Regarding the diesel particulate filter, it will regenerate on its own and there will be very little need to perform a park regeneration. New for 2010 is the need to maintain DEF levels. So it's important to remember that just like any other fluid on the vehicle, always make sure that the DEF is topped off. Cummins is proud to be the diesel engine of choice for the fire and emergency vehicle market. We are committed to make every fire truck and emergency vehicle better. Mike, thank you much for being here today. You're welcome, Lou. Glad to be here.